How to use Aqua to manage tools for your Jenkins agents. Has this ever happened to you? You're able to successfully build the application you're working on on your machine, but when one of your teammates tries to do the same build, they are unable to because they don't have all of the correct versions of tools installed on their machine. On the other hand, let's assume that all of the developer machines do have all the correct versions of the tools installed. However, when your CI process runs, the agents don't have the correct tools installed or they have the wrong versions of those tools installed. Also, you're not at the point yet to where you can use ephemeral agents to where you can define your own tools within your pipelines. You could use a configuration management tool to manage the tooling on your agents, but what if I told you there was an easier way to do that? Enter an open source project named Aqua. Aqua is a tool that installs CLI tooling using a declarative YAML configuration. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins controller, it's version 2.319.1. And attached to this controller, I have a Linux-based agent. Also installed, I have the Aqua CLI at version 0.8.6. First off, let's go ahead and create a job just to verify that Aqua is installed properly. So I'm going to create a new pipeline job called Aqua. Click on Pipeline, click OK. Also down in the description, is a link to a repository that will have all of the code that we're writing today. As I'm going through the recording today, that repository is starting out empty. So by the time you see it, it will be complete. Okay, so let's go ahead and create this quick pipeline just to see how it works. And we can see here that we're just gonna run Aqua version and which Aqua so we can know exactly where it's installed. So let's click on save and click on build now. And once the job completes, what we're going to see is that Aqua version 086 is installed and it's living in Opt Tools Aqua Aqua. So that means what we have right now is Opt Tools Aqua is on the path for our agent. Now that we've verified that Aqua is installed on our agent and it's accessible from within a pipeline, let's go ahead and go over to Visual Studio Code and let's start building out our project. And I have this project locally, and right now you can see we just have a README and nothing else. And in fact, we want to go ahead and confirm that this machine also has Aqua installed on it. So just in my terminal, I'm going to type Aqua space version. And just like our agent, we have 0.8.6 installed on my local development machine. So I know I have Aqua ready to go here. And I know that I've got Aqua ready to go on my agent, so now we're ready to get started. The first thing that we need to do when setting up a project using Aqua is we need to create an Aqua YAML file. And we're going to say new file, and I'm going to give it the name of aqua.yaml. Now if we go over and take a look at the documentation for Aqua, and it's at aquaproj.github.io. And if we go to the tutorial tab, we'll see quick start, it tells us to install Aqua, which we've already done. We've checked the version of Aqua, and now we're ready to install tools with Aqua. And this is the starting point. We're gonna create an aqua.yaml file, and we need to create a registry entry. So I'm gonna take and copy this block of registry and put it over into my aqua yaml file, but I'm gonna make some changes. Number one, I don't need the renovate for our example, so I'm removing it. But what is this reference? Aqua provides a registry that's named standard, or it's a type of standard that we can automatically pull in and use. Now you can also define your own registries. We're not gonna get into that today, but we're gonna use the standard. But notice that it's versioned. How do we know what the correct version is that we need to use? Well, there is a GitHub repository that's at aquaproj aqua-registry. And if we look here at the time of recording, the most recent release is 0.12.1. So I'm going to go back and update my registry to be 0.12.1. So now that we have the registry defined, I want to go and find a CLI that I want to install. And specifically, the CLI that I want to install is JQ. So let's run aqua space G, which gives us the ability to search for what is inside of this registry. So what this gives us is a CLI to where we can search. 
So if I just type JQ, then it's going to filter down to the options that have JQ in it. And the one I want to use is the Stetoland JQ standard, standards referencing the registry version. So I'm just going to go ahead, type JQ, I'm going to select the Stetoland JQ, and I'm going to hit the Enter key. And the output from this is the entry that I need to add to my Aqua YAML file. But I don't add this directly to the Aqua YAML file as is. First off, I need to go ahead and type packages. And now I can paste in my Stetoland JQ 1.6 entry. Now, if I wanted to install a different version of JQ, I could change the version, let's say from 1.6 down to 1.5. Now, if 1.5 was available within the standard registry, then it would install 1.5. But what I want is 1.6. So at this point, what I have is I have my standard registry defined with the latest reference to my registry, which at this point is 0.12.1, and I'm going to install JQ. So just to prove I don't have JQ anywhere available to me right now, I'm going to type JQ and I get back a command not found. So in order to install JQ 1.6 using Aqua, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type Aqua space I. So what it's done is it has downloaded JQ, put it on the path to where Aqua needs it, and then it's available. So now if I type JQ, I can now receive back output from JQ 1.6, it even tells me where the path is here, but I want to look at this a little bit differently. I want to do which JQ, and I also want to do command-v JQ, both of which are pointing at a .aqua slash bin directory. Now this is where I'll leave it up to you to go through the Aqua documentation to understand how all of this works. But at this point, this version of JQ is available within only this project. If I was to go up one level and I'm outside of the Jenkins example Aqua directory and I type JQ, nothing is found. Aqua is still on the global system level, but since there is no Aqua YAML file found, then it doesn't know anything about the JQ installation. If I go back down into Jenkins example Aqua, then, type JQ again, now I see the output from JQ. So now that we have our Aqua YAML file correctly configured, what we want to do is go ahead and create a Jenkins file that will go ahead and do this installation on our agent and verify that JQ is actually installed. So let's go ahead and create a Jenkins file. New file, Jenkins file. And I have an example off to the side, so I'm going to go grab that real quick. And I'm going to get rid of this ENV. That's not necessary. So we're going to do the same step that we did to do our verification, which was Aqua version, which Aqua. So we're checking that Aqua is installed. We're going to keep that in. We're going to install our Aqua packages, which is Aqua I, which we just ran locally. And then we're going to verify the Aqua package was installed. Now we're not going to be doing anything real with JQ, but I wanted to show you how a JQ binary could be installed and then how to use it within your pipeline. So we have our Aqua YAML file, we have our Jenkins file. Let's go ahead and get these committed and pushed up. So this is gonna be initial commit. And we're gonna save all and commit because I forgot to do that. And we're going to sync our changes. We'll go back over to our controller. Let's create a new item. I'm gonna call this Aqua2 click on pipeline, click on OK. We're gonna change this to pipeline script from SCM, get, change our branch to main, and our script path is Jenkins file. We'll click on save, and then click on build now. Let's see what happens here. We see our clone, we're checking out Aqua, we do our Aqua I, which does the installation of JQ. And then once we're done, we do our command V JQ, which tells us that 
JQ is installed on the home path of Vagrant, which is the root user that I'm using to connect from our controller down to the agent, dot aqua bin JQ. And then we can see just from JQ version that we have JQ 1.6. Now, what if you don't want to install your tooling at the root of the user? If you take a look at the Aqua documentation, it doesn't really matter. All the tooling can always go at the global, and then based on which directory you're in, you can choose different versions of the tooling. But let's make the assumption for a moment that we don't want to install anything at the user level, or what I'm calling the global level. What if I only want to install the Aqua tooling within my workspace? Let's see how to do that. Let's go back over to our Jenkins file. I'll go ahead and close this up. What we need to do is add in a couple of environment variables. Aqua gives us the ability to define our Aqua root directory. And in my case, I'm going to say workspace.aqua. And then I'm also going to be prepending on to the path workspace.aqua slash bin. So by adding in these two environment variables, when the job runs, then JQ will be installed within the workspace instead of at the user level as it is at the moment. So let's go ahead and save this and push this up and see how it runs. So add env, sync changes. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now let's go back over to our job, Aqua 2. Let's click on build now. And if we take a look at the output of 2, what we're going to see is Aqua still is 086 on Optools Aqua. So Aqua itself lives on the agent. But when we do our Aqua I, what we can see here is that it is installing into Home Vagrant Agent, which is the root of my Jenkins agent, and then Workspace and Aqua 2, which is the workspace for the Aqua 2 job, and then putting it into .aqua bin. And we can see that as well here under Command V, Home Vagrant Agent, again, that's the root directory for my agent, and then Workspace Aqua 2, that's my job, and then .aqua bin JQ. That way, I have isolated my tooling just within my workspace. Now, why should you consider using Aqua to manage tooling for you? First off, it allows you to manage the versions of all of your tooling right beside your application code. That way, you don't have to rely on the versions of tooling that are installed on your agents. Next, it protects your CI processes from colliding versions. For example, Let's assume that you're expecting to be able to use JQ 1.6. However, JQ 1.5 is on the system path. It might work and it might not. By using Aqua, we know that we will have JQ 1.6 because we defined JQ 1.6. Finally, as we said at the beginning, if you're not to the point to where you can use ephemeral agents to where you can define exactly which tooling and versions of that tooling that you want to use, Aqua gives you that ability to define the tooling and the versions that you need right along with your application code. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.